Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on Twitter with your basic Sorgonomics for this Friday, Friday, Friday. Big weekend. Big weekend coming up. A lot of wrestling shows going on. Uh, IWC Wrestling, RWA, double shot. We're splitting the teams. We're going to see how that goes. Splitting the equipment. It's so tough. It's fun. it's fun. So last night, yesterday was my brother's, uh, actually his birthday. And uh, we went to Dave and Buster's surprise party. Uh, my sister and, and, and her crew, my nephew, uh, my mom, um, all hanging out down at Dave and Buster's, uh, having a good time. And uh, and it was cool. It was real, real cool. Uh, so it, always weird because when I hear like, oh, we're going to Dave and Buster's, it's like, ooh. See, uh, Dave and Buster's was the place. Uh, you're not familiar with it. It really is an adult Chuck E. Cheese. Um, where it's, you know, an arcade, there's a bar, there's a restaurant, there's, there's, you can watch your sports there and everything. And, uh, and, and, and it's, it's a lot of fun, you know, and they really kind of, uh, make sure there's not like somebody in there with a gaggle of kids with their rules with minors and everything. So that's cool. Right. And, uh, and we used to go there and we used to go there a lot, not a lot, a lot. Like, you know, every time it was like my birthday and I think when it was my brother's birthday, uh, so for several years, we we go a couple times a year, and I remember getting to a certain point with it, and I think it was on my birthday, when uh, I'm walking around, and I'm, and I'm thinking, like, man, this is, like, the sad state of the arcade, or I was bored with it, because there was, really wasn't much turnover in games, it was the same thing every time we went, went in there, and, uh, and, and that was it, you know, um, and, and it was really interesting, because now... We go back, and I'm like, oh, it's going to be the same stuff it was how many years ago when we went. And I haven't probably been there for three or so years, maybe a little longer. And it's definitely changed. Um, some of the hits, and they're going to they're gonna sound familiar. Some of the things that we spent the most time on were um, four-player Pac-Man, four-player Mario Kart, uh, Infinity Blade, um, and, 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 and observation of such games as Cut the Rope, Candy Crush, Fruit Ninja. Are, are, are you seeing a trend here? Are you seeing a trend going on here? Um, so, uh, you know, whereas before I felt like, uh, you know, of course the arcade specializes in experiences you can't get at home, right? And then let's take this back for a moment. Uh, I remember as a kid, you know, my parents were awesome. They let, they got me a Nintendo Entertainment System. I got to play my Mario, my Donkey Kong and everything. But when I go to an arcade, my mom would take me to the department store, and there'd be an arcade in the front of the store. And uh, I'd say, hey, can I have a quarter? Can you, can you give me a quarter, Mom? Um, and, uh, I, and and she would look at me and say, no, you have video games at home. Why would you want to play that video game? that You have them at home. Um, of course, at the time, I believe that's when, like, you know, games better looking than nintendo were coming out right games like you know well mortal kombat street fighter something like that that i'm not able to play on my little nintendo entertainment system mom didn't understand that she thought it was a video game is a video game is a video game of course it's okay mom it's okay uh but anyways and i think that's the case here what i'm kind of battling with because i'm looking at this and it's like why would i want to play this game and pay money at dave and buster's when it's on my ipad in the case of infinity blade uh, Infinity Blade, Infinity, Infinity Blade One is actually there, and it's adapted, of course. It, it's really kind of following along, and the really interesting thing is you play it for the coupons. Um, you know, as if you're playing skee ball, right? You're you're getting tickets, coupons to to to, to buy other things in our Winter Circle store. You know, Chuck E. Cheese style. Uh, really interesting that that gets adapted. And I'm really surprised which ones have coupons. Um, there's a physical Angry Birds game where you actually slingshot, physically slingshot at the screen, and it detects where that is and and, and knocks down the, uh, you know, the birds and stuff. Uh, you know, some of the other uh, Fruit Ninja, of course, like I mentioned, you know, that we're sitting there playing Mario Kart uh, DX, I think officially is the name of it, which is basically uh, technologically uh, is Mario Kart 8 for the uh, uh, Wii U that. A few of us have right a adapted. It's in you know a uh, full stand up, four players linked. Uh, you know, uh, Namco did the did the stand up of it. You know, I mean, it's different to have a force feedback <laughs> steering wheel. Yes, to do it. 
uh, it's 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 very interesting. They had an interesting component where there's a camera above you, and uh, and and they put a, kind of an overlay of like Wario's nose and hat and stuff, or or Yoshi's head as a hat, which is really creepy now that I think of it. And 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 that's the face that pops up when you see who got you with the turtle shell or whatever the case may be. Uh, which was a really, really fun concept. And that was worth it. I think it was definitely worth it. Um, the Pac-Man. The Pac-Man game is uh, really Pac-Man Championship Edition that a lot of you may have played on your Xbox on, on Arcade Live or or on an iPhone or Android. You know, I mean, it's it's it, but it's adapted for for people with a joystick, kind of a giant screen and party atmosphere. And, and you can eat other. And I think there might be multiplayer in those games on, on certain consoles as well. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I can't recall. I have it on the iPhone, so I'm not sure. And and again, just adapted games like that. Uh, I mean, there's of course stuff that you're not going to have. There's experiences. Uh, I didn't catch this until I ran out of my my coins. But uh, there's actually a 4D haunted house experience where you put on 3D glasses, you sit in a thing, and I guess it, you know there's noises come from every which way as you're going through this kind of gun game. Um, you know, or there's a transformer sit down. Uh, there's a Jurassic Park newer uh, uh, sit down. There's a Kung Fu Panda where you punch things around you as as things pop up and on the sides. I mean, again, it's those experiences, and it really has. There's not a lot of stand ups in the corner somewhere. Is a newer, uh, you know, there's combo machines with Miss Pac Man and Galaga, or uh, or or all the Donkey Kongs and Mario Brothers, right? I mean, that's it. That's it for your classics. And then there's, there's a whole array over on the other end. That's all the Time Crisis and House of the Dead. And, and, and again, more kind of 4D, 3D things, you know, or the, the Star Wars Battle Pod, which I kind of like. So there's, there's this nice, like, familiarity if you go there. For these iPad -y games, those are now the, well, that's the thing I play back home on the console. Why am I going to pay for this here? Why is the experience so much different? You know, especially looking at some of these games and, you know, the, the time crisis, old time crisis and the old House of the Dead. You're like, well, that, that, that looks like what I have at home. It, it, the arcade has shrunk in, in, as an industry, but, but, but yet has, has been smart to jump on the doodle, the doodle jump uh, bandwagon, right? There's a Flappy Birds. There, it's not Flappy Birds. They call it Floppy Tickets, but it's Flappy Birds, right? It, it, it's 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 an, it's insane. Um, but it, it's really interesting to stay at the arcade. I think, and in the long run, again, is that familiarity. Oh, there's the other thing. Back when you used to go to Dave and Buster's, you wouldn't like bring video games with you. That seems like a weird concept. Why would I bring my Game Boy with me while I'm gonna go play some Dave and Buster's? Where I was sitting there and everybody was 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 eating. And uh, and I and I realized I pulled out my phone and I was like, oh hey, hey check out this new game I got because uh, uh, Chachi had just sent me the link that morning of uh, the Pac-Man 256s, which is the um, the Crossy Road Pac-Man kind of crossover that they they just put out, um, which I couldn't get to sleep because I was playing this thing. Uh, and I'm sitting there playing that thing, and then I realized I was like, and then I like looked up, I'm like, I'm at a freaking arcade, and I'm playing a game on my phone. Such a weird, weird world that we live in. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, what do you think about the if you've made it to a Dave and Buster's or some other significant arcade that has this kind of collection of video games? Uh, what do you think about the state of that? Uh, the idea that your iPad games are now arcade games, your Infinity Blades, your Doodle Jumps, your your Flappy Birds, your jeez, <laughs> um, or whatever the case may be. Cut the rope, man. Cut the rope is just ah. There's another one. Side note: There's another one because somebody, uh, our, our, my my original co-host for Awesome Cast, uh, does awesome things. So he he makes uh, uh, stuff for conferences, uh, displays for conference, and they had these clear see-through LCDs. There's been stories about like Coke machines that have these, and and basically it's like the LCD on your on your TV, but without that back glass that lights up that makes you know the colors pop out. And they put this over top of of these characters. And it's a touch screen, and you flip these paint characters, and there's a blacked out sun or something, and you're trying to cover it with paint. And and, and I just love that they were using that clear LCD technology. And anyways, uh, but there's fun, innovative stuff at the at the arcade again. Again, I guess you know. So let me know what you think at Sorgatron on the Twitter. Um, obviously, hey, 
here's me not talking about social media for once. So, uh, but we do talk about a lot, lot, a lot of podcasts, and we actually have a guest post this week on the newsletter. So please sign up for that at sorgatron.com. And please comment on this and uh, other episodes of whatever kind of strikes your fancy. Keep an eye out for me at Sorgatron on Twitter. I like the Periscope. I always like the live stream to know I got eyes on me. I don't know if it's a performance anxiety thing or something. Um, but keep an eye on it. Uh, typically recording these Monday or Tuesday night after we do other shows or uh, Thursday or Friday morning. Sometimes I batch them up on Thursday if I have a busy fr- Friday. All right, It might be a little around. But uh, but no, you can jump in, comment, and sometimes I, I say, hey, what's up? And we have a little conversation afterwards too. Uh, so there's an opportunity there to interact with me, as if there aren't enough opportunities to interact with me. I just like talking to people. So, All right, I'm going to go do some responsible things, post this thing. You guys have a great great weekend this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com